Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video I am going to show you how to install a Tsunami sound card decoder into one of my Intermountain uh, 4750 uh, cubic foot cover toppers. So the beauty of the Tsunami sound card decoder is it allows you to um, add sound to any of your rolling stock. In my case I want to add some realism to my layout to get the uh, you know the clickety clack of the wheels, the uh, flange squeal, it can simulate a flat spot on the wheel of the uh, rolling stock. So I wanted to do this to just add another layer of realism to my layout. Uh, you can go to the Soundtracks website, take a look at the Sound Car Instruction Manual. It's about 50 pages to see if this is something that will work for you on your layout. In order to get the sound card to work, you need to either do one of two things. You can wire up your uh, the current trucks on your rolling stock, or Atherin actually has um, a pair of trucks that you can purchase that actually have electrical pickups on them. So if you can kind of really closely look at, there's a there's a brass fitting in there that actually um, touches both wheels and you'll actually be able to get the um, current from the rails through these particular trucks. So these are pre-wired and this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to swap out the trucks that I have on my Intermountain um, covered hopper. The interesting thing about the Ather and Genesis rolling uh, the trucks is they have uh, animated roller bearing caps. The Intermountains do not. So I what I ended up doing was I got a, another set of roller bearing trucks since I only need two feeders, I'm only going to use one truck that has the wires coming off of it. So then I'm going to replace the other set of trucks on the on the covered hopper with the non-wired, but they still have the animated roller cap. So you wouldn't necessarily have to do that, but just to keep it consistent to have the uh, animated roller trucks, I got a wired pair and then I'm going to add the non-wired pair. So when you purchase, I got all of this off of eBay. Uh, you can certainly shop around and get them uh, at your local hobby store or other online retailers. This retails for around $50. I was able to get it a little bit um, less off of eBay. And if you, you know, shop around, you can get free shipping. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. I have not had this open yet. I did look at the instruction manual on the website prior to purchasing it to make sure that this is something that shouldn't be that difficult to install. So here's the actual wiring schematic. So pretty, pretty um, straightforward. We're going to have our pickup trucks, or the trucks with the uh, electrical pickup. They're going to come in and uh, it's essentially you're just going to hook up the wires that come off the truck up to the sound card decoder. There are two wires that come off to the speaker and you do have some optional the current keeper that will uh, keep the current to your decoder even if you have poor electrical connection through your rails and you can also get some lighting functions depending on what kind of car you're putting this in if you're putting it in a passenger car or any other type of uh, car like a caboose that would have some lighting associated with it i'm not going to do any kind of lighting on this particular um on, on this covered hopper so that's the wiring schematic. Take a look here real quick, real quick. One of the things you do have to pay attention uh, about is some of the sound cars actually do not come with the speaker. Now this one did come with the speaker uh, included. So, you know, just pay attention. You might have to get a separate speaker. Take a look at this Soundtracks website. It actually gives you the compatible speakers that goes with this particular decoder. Okay, so I have it wired, or I'm sorry, I have the package opened up here. Um, so here's the actual speaker, and it sends some um, bafflers that are included with it. Uh, so here you can actually see it's upside down. So here's the speaker. I'm going to have to do some soldering. And then the um, it gives you just really some instructions. So this is a 9.5 millimeter by 30 millimeter uh, speaker. Uh, here's the terminal polarity if we're looking at it uh, like this. The negative is on the left, the positive is on the right. 
we have some of these other enclosures. Here's a mounting flange, so um, we'll have a little bit of fun putting this together. So here's the back side of the speaker enclosure. So there's two areas for wires. So um, I have a couple different options for how I want to mount this, and we'll we'll worry about this here uh, in a few minutes uh, after we get everything else figured out. Here is the actual sound card decoder. So if you can see very carefully, so you have your black wire which is in what appears to be position one. You have your red wire which appears to be in position eight. So those are going to be the two uh, power inputs to the decoder. All of the other wires basically can go to your the speakers and optional light output if you're putting lights on your car. So I went ahead and opened up the uh, trucks, the Athern Genesis trucks, so you can see. So again, if you look real carefully here, real closely, you can see where the electrical pickups are in between the truck and the actual wheel. The center axle is plastic, so um, it's going to isolate electrically isolate the wheels because you have two... Um, basically the uh, fitting is attached to or connected to both wheels but since they're electrically isolated in the middle one of these wires is going to be red one of these wires will be black so these two will operate independent from one another um, so basically what I'm going to do now is go ahead and prepare the um, rail car for installation the beauty part of the tangent uh, 4750 covered hoppers the top of the car actually comes off so I'm going to get full access to inside the hopper um, so I'm actually going to mount this in accordance with how the directions actually state for us to mount it on the sound car decoder there's what's called an intelligent cons uh, consisting sensor and basically what this allows you to do is consist this to your locomotive so when you increase the throttle on your locomotive this will actually be consisted with the locomotive and you can uh, as the locomotive picks up speed it's going to change the rate of the sounds that come from the car so this intelligent consisting sensor essentially will allow us to consistent to the locomotive without having to go through the entire process of like what how you how you would uh, do a multiple unit consist by adding two or three locomotives to the um, primary locomotive this has to be in a precise location so that you can activate this sensor with a magnet okay I'm going to go ahead and take uh, the one set of trucks off here Set this off to the side. Probably the only bad thing about doing this on a covered hopper is the uh, underside of the hopper isn't flat like you'd see with like a you know just regular box car or something like that. So I'm going to try to drill the holes as close to the edge as possible so the um, wires won't be quite as visible uh, when they go through. The underside up into the uh, car body. I'm not going to video drilling the holes out only because I want to make sure that I don't screw this up and I'm going to um, manipulate the car here upside down and move the camera so I'll be back as soon as the holes are drilled. Okay if you can see them you can sort of see there the two holes right there flip this upside down there you can see them so now basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to feed these wires Make sure I get them on the right side here, the correct side, I should say, not the right side. So I'm going to feed that up like so. And I will do the same thing with the other truck. So 
So there I have my wires for the uh, electrical pickup truck pulled through. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and re-secure the truck with the screw, the original screw. The Atherin trucks did not come with screws, which is fine. I don't want to get that too tight, just so there's some play left in the... Make sure that it looks like it has some free movement. have my wires up inside the hopper here. We are good to go on this bad boy. Okay, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to swap out this other truck just while I have all my tools out here so they match. And then we'll continue on with the next step of this process. Okay, I got the truck swapped out. One of the other things I did, so I'm going to mount the decoder in this bay. The wires for the trucks are in this bay, and I'm going to put the speaker in the center bay. Because the wires on this decoder are so long, I didn't want to try to have to fight with all the wires in one or two of these bays. So what I ended up doing to run the wires is I just drilled uh, just 16th inch holes in both of these support stanchions, and I'm just going to feed the wires through. So I'm just going to do a couple at a time here. So the two purple wires are going to go to the middle, the red and black wires are going to go to the third bay. Okay, so I have the two purple wires in the center bay, <clears throat> excuse me, I have my black and red wires over here in the third bay where the uh, wires for the trucks come off, and then I have the unused wires I'm just going to tuck into this first bay here. So now my next task is I'm going to mount the decoder on the side of the hopper here and the instructions say to use some two-sided tape so I'm going to try that and see if it holds and if it doesn't I'm just going to put a couple dabs of modeler's glue and glue this into place so let me go grab my um, double-sided tape and I'll be right back one of the other things this is just a it, it's just a gripe it's me griping for a couple minutes they could not have made this any more difficult. On this wiring harness there was a brown wire, two purple wires, and a black wire. And to me, these colors look identical. Um, uh, and I know that that's NMRA standards for the color codes, but I wish that uh, Soundtracks would have just maybe tried some a brighter color purple, maybe a lighter color brown, because the black, the brown, and the purple they all look almost identical to me, so be very careful when you're wiring this up that you get the correct colors. I guess I'm not even 100% confident I got them the right colors isolated. I'm pretty sure I do. guess we'll find out if this thing doesn't work, so just pay attention to that as you're wiring up your um, decoder. So I just used some Scotch double-sided tape, and believe it or not, I'm actually shocked that that worked perfect. This, uh, it, this decoder is solid. And the other nice thing is um, the top of this model comes off so easily, so for whatever reason, if the tape fails and if the decoder falls down, I can just pop the top off and retape it, but that, that thing is on there solid. So the decoder's mounted. I got my wire set for my speaker, which is going to go in here. I have my wire set for the power supply. So really now the next step is to get the uh, speaker assembled, get it installed, and then we're going to start soldering. Okay, I went ahead and got everything soldered up, so I have my decoder mounted, my speaker mounted, uh, all my wires wired up and taped up. So, uh, with the speaker, I know the instructions say to point it down, but just with the design of the covered hopper, there's a lot of lead weight down there, and I'm just afraid it's going to muffle the sound too much, so I am pointing this up. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the roof panel, and we'll go ahead and take it to the layout and test it out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, detect the decoder with my GMRI, so I'm going to go ahead and click on New Locomotive. Read decoder from type. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to do here because this is a sound card decoder. Let's see if it's going to read anything. So it is reading the decoder. And voila, Tsunami Sound Car. So it is preloaded into GMRI. So I'm going to go ahead and um, open the Comprehensive Programmer. So 
So I'm going to go ahead and name this. So the ID, right now this is set to a DCC address of 3. So I'm going to reprogram this to the last four digits of the road number. The last four digits are 5490. Road name, I'll just type this in here real quick. Illinois. Illinois Central Gulf, road number 5490, I'm going to, I'll fix that later, this is a PS4750 covered hopper, so we'll go ahead and save that to roster. And now we'll just go ahead and start taking a look at some of the functions. So here's the function map. Um, as the instructions say that if you have lights on your uh, rolling stock, you can go ahead and use this as a lighting function. Um, there's a whistle function, bell function, some livestock function generator for, let's say, a uh, um, reefer. Um, coupling and uncoupling brakes so let's go ahead and click back on the basic I'm gonna change this to a long address I'm gonna do a 5490 I'm gonna write changes so I'm gonna go back to the roster entry and you can see that's updated now to 5490 on the DCC address sound um, two axles per truck, you can change that if you want to, so if you had like a, let's say, um, a passenger car, you can change that. Sorry, that's my DCC system. Gives you three choices of horns, I'm going to change this to a Nathan K5 LA horn, although I'll, I'll never use it. Um, sound levels, master volume control, I did read it in, in the instructions, this can go up as high as 255 it was set at about 75 percent so I'm going to go ahead and change that so I'll write those changes speed table um, there's no options available for a speed table so we'll go back to, to um, click on the CVs so in the full instruction manual that you get online it gives a solid list of some of these CVs. I'm not going to change anything right now because I'm going to test it out with my locomotives, but there are CVs that you can read from your locomotive and then match the corresponding CV to the same level. So as you accelerate with your locomotive that it's going to, um, the sounds coming from the car should match that. I'm going to click on this um, CONSIS button here. Intelligent consist function output. You can change this, and I think I am going to change this to. I'm going to change this to F1. So you have to change. You have to click on that four times. I'm I'm only changing this because eight controls the mute, and I. Well, I'm just going to try it. I can always change it back. So I'm going to write these changes. So I'm not going to change anything else right now. These are the only CVs I'm going to change for now, but let's go ahead and test this out and see how it works. Okay, I have my covered hopper on the layout. I already know this one error I made. The road number is 5990, so I'm going to go back and change that in JMRI here. So as of right now, I did set this up. So I'm going to highlight the locomotive. I programmed this in as 5490, not 5990. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. So that is now programmed in. So I don't have this consisted with the locomotive yet, but I'm going to go ahead and apply track power. Track power on. So, I'm just 
just going to test out a couple of the functions here. So F1 should be the bell. That works. F2 should be the horn. F3, short horn. F4, I believe, is a livestock function. That must not be enabled. Um, I'm going to pull the instruction sheets here to see what the rest of the functions are. Uh, so F4 is unassigned, F5 and 6 are function outputs, F7 is the dimmer, that won't work, F8 is the audio mute, F9 should be the generator. So that sounds good. Like I said, if you installed this in a uh, refrigerated car. So take that off. F10 should be the uh, glad, glad hand release. F11, apply brakes. Hit it again to release. F12 is a coupler clank. So all those sounds good. So then to get the uh, clickety-clack and the flange squeal, really all you have to do is just apply as you would um, apply uh, power to your locomotive. You can hear that. So as you increase your throttle, you can hear it comes more and more prominent. So then we'll just back that down. Okay, so the sound works. The installation worked. I have sounds. It uh, was able to program the decoder from the default address of 3. All of the functions work. So now the next step is to go ahead and get this consisted to a locomotive. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate the intelligent consisting feature that this particular decoder has. So what you need is you just need a uh, just any regular magnet, household magnet, refrigerator magnet. This is a magnet. Uh, it's a KD between the rail and coupling magnet. This is for scale or uh, code 100 track. I don't have code 100 track so this is useless to me. Found a great use for it. So to get this to work you simply wave it over where the decoder is. It will make a noise to indicate that the intelligent consisting feature is activated. So what you need to do is make sure that your locomotive is highlighted. So 637 is the locomotive I'm using. The default, remember, you had to hit F8 four times to get this to um, consist. I'm going to hit F1 because I remember I changed that on my JMRI. F1 four times and you'll hear a noise like a brake release to indicate that it is consistent. So Okay. It's consistent. If you notice F8 is engaged, the locomotive is muted. So that means that the that the uh, freight car is muted as well. So I'm going to go ahead and take F8 off. So I'm going to apply power to the locomotive and you should be able to hear the wheels and the flange sounds. Okay, then to remove this from the consist, take your same magnet, and then you're basically going to wave it over where the decoder is.
and you can hear that it went through uh, essentially a brake application. So I'm going to mute the locomotive and I'm going to go ahead and reactivate through the magic of video. I did change this to 5990 so in between uh, testing this out I put it back on the programming track and re reprogrammed it to 5990. So now 5990 is now active and I'm just going to go ahead and apply track power. And that is all there is to it. So this is a great product. I would highly recommend it. I'm probably going to get at least two or three more of them. So uh, it just gives more prototypical sound. You can uh, consist as uh, many of these as you have. I'm going to do a quick uh, run through one of my grade crossings. And if you have any questions about how to install this, please let me know. Enjoy. Thank you very much.